If you want to know the key to building more accurate Gen AI applications, you need to understand Retrieval Augmented Generation, or RAG. Large language models like GPT from OpenAI, Claude from Anthropic, and Gemini from Google were all trained on the public internet. So while there's a lot of topics that these models know about, there's also a lot of things these models don't know, like the contents of files in your private file system, or proprietary data in your company's databases. If you ask ChatGPT how to solve a customer's problem, it will give you an answer, but that answer won't take into account any of your company's policies or any of the interactions that customer has had with your business in the past. Likewise, language models only have information up to a specific point in time called their training cutoff. So if you need the latest up-to-date information on news, product launches, or financial markets, then large language models are not going to give you what you need out of the box. And these are some of the problems that retrieval augmented generation is going to help you to solve. RAG is a mechanism to fill in these blind spots. Instead of simply giving the LLM a question and waiting for it to generate a response, we're now going to add a knowledge base into our architecture. When a user gives us their input, we'll retrieve the relevant context from our knowledge base. Then when we call the LLM, we'll provide not only the user's input, but also that context. The language model will then use this context to augment the generation process, in effect, allowing the language model to generate more accurate responses even about topics it wasn't trained on. You may be thinking, wait a minute, I don't just have one knowledge base, I have many, because depending on the use case, I may need to fetch context from a CRM like Salesforce or HubSpot, from a support system like Zendesk, or from files on platforms like Google Drive or SharePoint, or from one of the dozens or even hundreds of other places in your organization where unstructured data may live. If you tried to make calls to each of these systems directly from your application, you would have some pretty frustrated users. That's because every call you make results in additional wait time for the user, and the quality of search results from these platforms is not always the best. And that means that the responses that your LLM will generate may not always be the best either. For this reason, a lot of companies have invested in purpose-built solutions to provide fast retrieval. These include traditional search platforms along with things like knowledge graphs, but by far the most popular approach is to use a vector database. Vector databases like Pinecone, Elastic, and others have seen a huge uptick in adoption, and that's largely due to their ability to power a specific type of search known as semantic search. Semantic search differs from traditional search mechanisms that rely on keyword matching. Instead, semantic search uses uses a special type of machine learning model called a text embedding model that allows us to compare the deeper meaning between two pieces of text. Let's look at an example. We have two sentences, I love being near you and I hate being apart from you. You can see that these two sentences have very similar, nearly identical meanings. However, from a keyword search perspective, they couldn't be more different. Even if you use synonym matching instead of exact keyword matching, you still find that love is the opposite of hate and near is the opposite of apart. Semantic search, on the other hand, is able to accurately identify that the meaning of these two sentences is nearly identical. And this technique is incredibly useful when trying to retrieve the most relevant pieces of information to help your LLM respond to a user's input. Because collecting all of your files, your CRM notes, your documentation, and getting it into a structure that's going to provide you with fast, accurate retrieval can be a challenge. And there are a few things that you absolutely must know if you're gonna build out a successful RAG data strategy, and I'm gonna cover those things right here in our next video.